Welcome to all the students once again. In the previous lecture, we have seen the syllabus of a subject that is the elements of Company Law 2. Today we will start the unit 4 of our subject and the unit 4 is e-governance and winding up of a company. And today we will first see the subtopic of this unit that is e-governance. Okay, so let us begin. In e-governance, we will first see the meaning and importance of e-governance. So let us see the meaning of e-governance. See, if you see in the Companies Act 2013, uh, in a section that is 398, section 398, which empowers the central government to introduce e-governance and facilitate electronic filing of forms, returns and documents with the registrar of companies. So this e-governance has been introduced in the Companies Act 2013 under the section 398. It is basically to facilitate it is basically to facilitate the electronic filing of the various forms and returns and documents with the registrar of companies without personally going there. So this is what e-governance is. If we see the word electronic in the term e-governance, it implies what technology driven governance. E-governance is the application of information and communication technology for delivering government services. So we are using ICT that is the information and the info that is the information and communication technology for delivering government services without manually or without doing the paperwork. Okay. So electronic governance refers to the online delivery of information and services related to the activities and processes involved in governing a country or state through internet or other digital means. So basically the governance that is e-governance means that online delivery of information and services related to the activities and processes that involves the governing of a country or a state by using the means of internet and other digital means. This is what e-governance means. It is the application of information technology to government functioning in order to bring about simple, moral, accountable, responsive and transparent governance that is called as smart governance. In short, we can say that e-governance refers to the use of information technologies like local area network, wide area network, the internet and mobile computing etc. by the government agencies. Such use of information technology will be beneficial to give better delivery of government services to citizens, improved interaction with business and industry. Citizen empowerment through excess of information or more efficient government management. So, increased trans uh, this also helps in increased transparency, less corruption, greater government convenience, cost reduction, revenue growth, etc. are the resulting benefits of e-governance. That is why it has been introduced in the Companies Act 2013. Traditionally, we, if we see the interaction between the uh, citizens or business and government agencies, were used to take place in a government office, but now it has changed as e-governance enhances the citizens and businesses access to government information and services and provide new ways to increase citizen participation in democratic functioning of the government. So this, in this way, e-governance has improved the participation of the citizen in the government processing or in the government work, bringing better, uh, bringing more transparency in the work and the administration of the government offices. So th this is how e-governance has changed the scenario. So e-governance therefore means what? The application of ICT to transform the efficiency, effectiveness, transparency and accountability of exchange of information and transaction between whom? Between the government, between government agency, between government and citizens and between government and businesses. So this is how e-governance is being done between the different agencies that is government, government agencies, citizens and businesses and industries. Okay. Now let us move forward to the definition of e-governance or e-government you can say. So according to the World Bank, e-government refers to the use 
by government agencies of information technology such as the wide area networks, the internet, mobile computing that have the ability to transform relations with citizens, businesses and other arms of government. Okay. So these technologies can serve a variety of different ends, better delivery of government services to citizens, improved interaction with industry and business, citizen empowerment through access to information or more efficient government management. The resulting benefits can be less corruption, increased transparency, greater convenience, revenue growth and or all cost reductions. Because if everything is being trans, how it is a transfer, how it brings transparency and how it reduce, reduces the corruption. If everything is done online, then it is uh, visual to everyone. Nothing can be concealed. No information can be concealed or manipulated. Everything is just open, open access to every citizens. So in this way, it uh, reduces the, in this way, it reduces the corruption and brings about more transparency in the work of government offices. So this is what uh, things which has been changed in the Companies Act 2039 to 2013 by bringing the e-governance in the by by bringing the e-governance into the comp into into the business work. So this was the definition of the e-governance. Now let us see the importance of e-governance. The first is improves delivery and efficiency of government services. Yes, if everything is done on, uh, on online base, then the delivery of information and the services is improved as it is quick and it saves the time. Next comes improved government interactions with the business and industry. Yes, there's no delay now. One can use, easily interact with the businesses and industries or government can interact with the business and industry through the online mode or through the online portal that is MCA which we will see in the next lectures. Next comes citizen empowerment through access to information. Easy access, it simply means easy access that public can have easy access to uh, relevant records and get their grievances redressed more effectively in this way bringing the citizen empowerment through the access of information. Next comes more efficient government management. If everything is being done online, e-filing forms, documents, then it brings the efficiency in the management of work as the paper will be reduced. Okay. Now next comes less corruption in the administration. Yes, it brings less corruption in the administration as everything is in open space. So it reduces the chances of corruption in the administration work. Next comes increased transparency in administration that has been discussed by me how it can, how it has increased the transparency in the uh, administration work. Next comes greater convenience to citizens and business. Yes, the people or the business, uh, business people or the industry doesn't have to go to the government offices uh, physically to fill the forms or to fill the documents. They just have to uh, click to the MCA portal and they can get all the information and the records which have to be submitted by them. Next comes cost reductions and revenue growth. After that comes reduced paperwork and red tapeism in the administrative process which results in better planning and coordination between different levels of government. As I have said, it reduces the paperwork because if everything is done online uh, related to the filing documents, forms, records, then Ultimately, it reduces the paperwork and the red tapism means there is, a, there is no delay in the work and the administrative process can function very well and even in a very effective and efficient way. The next is improved relations between the public authorities and civil societies. After that comes better services by the Ministry of Company Affairs. Yes, MC employees shall be equipped to deliver the best of services if everything is being provided online or if the services of the companies has been company information has been provided online to the industries and businesses. So these are the uh, importance of the e-governance and the four most important is the government it's allowed transparency allow government transparency because e-governance allows for government transparency because it allows the public to be informed about what the government is working 
on as well as the policies they are trying to implement so in this way it increase the transparency and less corruption in the administration so these were the importance of e governance in the next lecture we will see the next half of the uh, unit 4 till then thank you very much